Hey, welcome to Simper Social Club. I'm Jeremy. First ever live stream. Thank you so much for joining me. Um, my good friend Whiskey in the Six is here in spirit on the other side of the line. Uh, huge ice storm in Toronto today kind of limited our uh, traffic ability. So couldn't make it here in person, but he is here alive. Uh, say hello, Rob. Hey guys, what's going on? Rob from Whiskey in the Six, for those of you that don't know me. Uh, yeah, honestly, I really wanted to come out there. Like, You've come to my house several times during lives that we've done together. I wanted to return the favor. Also, I wanted you know to enjoy some of that great whiskey that you have on that table. But <laughs> obviously, we'll have to do that another day. Yeah. So let me just get into what we got in store for you guys tonight because we got a fully packed show. Um, first off, I'm going to crack a new bottle tonight. Uh, this is one that I've had on the shelf for a while. If you've seen my collection video I did last last year uh this was kind of the one i saved for the very end it is uh gordon mcphail 1974 art bag aged 22 years um let me just give you a little bit let me just show you the bottle here because it is uh it's kind of interesting this one um just click that. there we go so it says 20 years old age statement now the person who i got this from i traded a George T. Stag for this, um, from someone in the States, he emailed Gordon McPhail, because if you look at it, 1996 bottled, uh, 1974 distilled, which is 22 years. Now it says 20 on the, on, the, on the age statement on the label. So because of some kind of importing um, laws with the United States, Gordon McPhail kind of said that the importer just kept it at 20 years, even though this was aged an additional two. So they put the 1996 label on the top, but in fact, it is 22 years old. It's kind of interesting. This was imported by John, John Gross and Co. in Baltimore, Maryland. So kind of an interesting bottle. Super excited to get into it. Um, I've heard great things. I've seen a review on Whiskey Fun of this. Got a huge mark from from Surge, so really excited to try it. Uh, we'll get into more about 1970s, 1960s uh, whiskeys and scotches, and kind of why those are you know kind of sought after and why they're like really highly regarded, really highly reviewed. So we'll get into that later. Um, another thing I got into the show for tonight: a little game we're gonna play later. You'll see the dartboard behind me. That is kind of like a semi-blind kind of whiskey challenge uh, that I'll do. And uh, you guys try to win some prizes from that. Um, lots of other stuff to give away. Got some uh, some Pappy, some George C. Stag, some uh, highly sought after bottles. I'll be giving samples of those away tonight. I got some glasses to give away. So lots of stuff uh, happening in the show tonight. Um, oh, Mash and Drum. First super chat of the night of my whole career live, actually. Thank you so much. Um, I have, okay, this was this was planned. I got my whiskey, Tipper Social Club, Super Chat Gong. Um, this is funny because like Mash and Drum, I watched one of his lives and he has a symbol and I was like watching it as I was painting this little Glen Karen on here. He's like, oh, I'm going to get a gong and like you'll see my gong in the next live. I'm like, oh, Jason, I'm freaking, I got the gong. I'm doing the gong. Like, what do you mean you have a gong as well? So here it is. <laughs> Thank you very much, Jason. Cheers. That is a super, super, uh, super social club, super chat gong. Awesome, Dan. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Love it. That's awesome, actually. I love that gong. That's sick. So, Rob, uh, what do you got going tonight? So, I'm going to open this uh, Talisker 18 since I was able to get – thanks to you, I was able to get this bottle. Um, and I figured it would be fitting to celebrate your 5,000 soon-to-be – uh well very soon it'll be six thousand then seven then eight then nine <laughs> pretty sure uh you'll be at 10 in a month's time but uh i wanted to open this talisker 18 year old in in celebration uh and kind of be there in spirit because i know you have one of these too yeah so that's what i have poured right now uh talisker 18 i did a review of this great stuff um i thought it was almost just as good as a 25 year old which is great because you know, it's less than half the price. Uh, really nice pour, for sure. Now, let's just get into the chat. Lots of people in here already, my goodness. 
Um, Tim, you're the first one in. What's up, man? How's it going? Um, Andrew, Santa Cruz, and um, Moose, what's up? Eric, how's it going? Uh, Eric Wade and I did an awesome uh, live uh, on last Friday. Did some art bag, really good stuff. Um, the uh, what is that? Gut rot review. What's up, man? I haven't seen you before. I don't think he's been uh, in a few times. Yeah. Okay. Uh, ben, uh, BB Jap, what's up, man? He's at work tonight. That's Jasper. Jasper yeah. is the super, super generous, um, kind gentleman who gave us all these samples for you as well, Rob. Yeah. So I'll have to get those to you. Um, all those awesome Brook Lottie, um, samples. We'll have to get into that sooner than later. Um, Mel Bell, what's going on? Mark, what's going on? Uh, Cash Strength, Vito, what's up, man? Loch Ness. Loch Ness, I got that sample. I still got to send it to you, man. I'm going to do that tomorrow for sure. Collegiate, what's up? Joe, geez, everyone's in the chat tonight. Um, Jeremy uh, Worthen, I don't think I've seen you before. What's going on, Jeremy? Um, sweet name. Moose, what's going on? Uh, Christine, what's up? How are you? MJ Anderson, geez, you guys. How many are in the chat? I don't, I don't have it pulled up. I don't know. Quite a few, it looks like. Uh, we got 46, 46 watching right now. Pretty solid. Oh, good. Pretty solid for uh, popping my cherry on the lives. <laughs> now, nor normally, when I do a review, I'm doing probably like, I don't know, 15 takes or so. <laughs> so the live stream is, uh, is a little weird for me because I'm always like, all right, let's just stop and restart. But obviously, can't do that tonight. Well, I mean, you've been on my channel quite a few times live, well, at least like 10 times now, no? That's true. But it's always, it's different, like, kind of like, it's different it most versus yeah. just you know ask me a question i'll answer it kind of thing it's true you never really get used to any of it there's always something else to be nervous about kind of yeah for sure <laughs> um so what's up guys what are you guys drink tonight anything i know um jasper obviously you're at work hiding out trying to listen to us uh but what else what do you guys drink tonight my uh my computer is lagging i don't know if it's not like do you notice it on your side or that's not i right? do not no i haven't noticed it Right, because it's trying to do too many things all at once. So I might just shut this and do it somewhere else. Yeah, sure, for sure. Um, who else? Is, uh, the Dan Tro, what's up, man? How's it going? Ryan, what's going on? Uh, David N, what's going on, dude? Lots of good guys in the chat tonight. All right, what I'm going to do, I'm going to crack this art bag. Um, I'm going to crack it and pour it and let it sit and then visit it later in the live. Just let this thing open up. When I first looked at this today, I'm like, all right, it's an old bottle. I got to be prepared for a broken cork. But yeah. uh, it's, it's a twist top. It's a screw off. It's a, twi wow. it's a twister. Yeah, I was like so surprised, right? It was really weird. I don't know yeah. if that was like for whiskey ball around like mid 90s, if that was something that they kind of did or. I don't know. That's very interesting, though. It, I mean, GNM has been bottling for a long time, right? So. Yeah, you think that like on an old bottle of Ardbeg like this, they would uh, kind of, you know, fork out the money for an actual cork, but. So you just poured yourself two glasses of that? So I poured myself two, yeah. One uh, for Caitlin. Caitlin, um, my awesome girlfriend who kind of lets me do all this uh, crazy whiskey stuff. So she gets a pour of everything, obviously. She was a big whiskey fan. Um, <laughs> so yeah, only seeing that she uh, she gets a pour as well. How's Caitlin doing? She's doing well. She's doing well. She um, she helped me out a lot for this for this uh, for this live stream. We got this whole blind tasting dartboard review challenge that's going to happen later on. So she kind of helped me do all that blind and set that all up. You hear that? She likes peated whiskey. <laughs> <laughs> now we're starting a rivalry between the between the uh, the ladies. <laughs> well, I got to get my wife to like whiskey in general. <laughs> That's the first thing. I'm surprised with all the nice bottles. She hasn't found something that's like, all right, this is good stuff, you know? She likes smelling it. She likes nosing it. She just doesn't like um, drinking it. Yeah, not yet anyway. So we'll see what happens. Yeah. Eventually. <laughs> so. Right. Go ahead. So the uh, the art bag, there's a kind of a cool story behind that. Did you want to get into that or you want to get into something else first? Yeah, let's talk about this art bag. So here's the story. I kind of mentioned it before. And I'll just kind of share um, what happened. So like I said, I traded for this art bag. I traded a guy in the States. 
Um, I had a bottle of George T. Stag, a 2016 version. Uh, we did a straight up trade. I sent it to him, he sent it to me. But like I said before, he contacted Gordon McPhail and was like, what is the deal with this bottle? Why does it say 20 years old when it's clearly 1996, uh, 1974, which makes it 22 years old? So he emailed them and they got back to him. So this is what they said. Um, especially they just responded and said, you are correct to the fact that the whiskey is actually 20 years old. However, the label states it's 20 years old. This has to do with the product registration in America. The product would have been registered as 20 years old. And so the age statement has been retained. So still kind of confusing exactly what they're, why they did that. Um, I can only assume that the importer was like, maybe if it's only 20 years old, you know, we save some importing fees or something. Maybe Gordon McPhail had a 20 year old that they released and they just kept whatever portion of this for an extra two years, kept the same label, just slapped, you know, a bottle date on the top. Potentially that's uh, something that they might have done as well. So I don't know. It's kind of an interesting bottle. So I'm excited to, uh, to get into this one tonight for sure. Um, one other thing I wanted to do, a um, little bit of whiskey news. Lots of happening in the world of Scotch whiskey. Oh, shit. Whiskey in the six, 20 bucks. All right, buddy, here's a gong for you. Congrats, man. Cheers. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. Um, yeah, awesome, man. First live, crazy stuff. Um, so, world of whiskey, whiskey news. Um, Something kind of happened on Instagram a couple of days ago that was kind of uh, kind of funny. There was a a new release for the Macallan Edition Five. Now, I don't know if you guys saw this on um, on Instagram or not, but there was this Macallan, the new edition, new edition five came out. Lots of people shared it. Uh, Whiskey in the Six shared it. Lots of people <laughs> shared this around and. Um, Guess what? It was a complete fake. This was someone who photoshopped it. It was not a real release from McAllen. It, here's the photoshopped um, file. Here it is, one to the other. Some guy did a really good job just kind of like, you know, with Photoshop changing this around. It's kind of cool because the label and stuff made sense, right? It was like this color um company so everything was kind of legit the abv was legit everything else was legit on it so um kind of funny i need to hire this guy for my photoshopping like thumbnail <laughs> and stuff like that because that was that fooled everybody i mean the the one that i shared was just the label uh and that's the only one that i actually saw but yeah. i never saw that picture but i thought that was pretty cool yeah, he duped me, that's for sure. And apparently a whole bunch of other people. <laughs> uh, Mash and Drum asking, are people hammering McCallum for their new marketing? Yeah, that I remember seeing that like dude jumping off like Mount Olympus and flying around, and I was just shaking my head when I saw that, that <laughs> advertising campaign. Eric Wade did a hilarious uh, spoof on that where he played I'm Too Sexy during the whole thing. It was really great. But that showed up like, on my Instagram, on my Facebook, on everything. Like it was just, it was just cringe worthy and just <laughs> awful, awful to watch. McAllen definitely lost points for me with that garbage, but I don't, who are they, who are they marketing to with that? You know, it's like the young douchey businessman who wants to like flash a McAllen bottle in front of his douchey business friends. <laughs> I think like, he nailed it. Like, I think, I think um, they're not really too concerned with, the whiskey geek they're more concerned about the guy that's got a lot of money that wants to look the part wants to be able to wear the suit drink the scotch something easy drinking because he's not necessarily a big whiskey drinker right so um it's too bad because a lot of whiskey geeks that have given a bunch of accounts a try absolutely love them um but i mean we're not their target we're not their target audience that's for sure no, and I was talking to Eric about this, about McAllen, and it's just like, McAllen makes a couple of really nice bottles, the 12-year-old cherry, the 18-year-old cherry, the edition series has been pretty good,
but then a lot of the other stuff is like either mediocre or super, super expensive that you're priced right out of buying it. Um, so like what percentage of McAllen would you buy? You know, 5% of what they make, maybe less. Yeah. Yeah. You know what? Like that, well, you can't, af I can't afford uh, more than 5% of what they make. You know what I mean? I love the classic cut. I think they've done really well with the additions. I got the addition four right here, um, which to be honest with you is my least favorite of the four editions, as well as the two classic cuts that were released. I think, I mean, I feel like it's young. I don't know why I feel it's young and I don't hear anybody else complain about it, but I feel like it's super, super young. Um, I, it's still good. It's just my least favorite of the bunch, but yeah, you're right. Like how many, how many McCallans can you afford? Like the 18 is already in and around $300 and then you just go up from there. So. Yeah. I mean that 18 year old, I remember buying it for 200 us at Costco in the States. I'm not sure what Costco is selling for now if they even still carry it. But yeah, you, all these people are like, you know, they see it for 285, $300. Like, I don't understand the price increase yeah. for that whiskey in the last, you know, two years, the retail price had just gone crazy. Well, the, not worth it. Totally not worth it. In my opinion, yeah. the 18 fine Oak is available at the LCBO now and it's $350. So, yeah, and like fine oak, um, not my cup of tea either. I don't, I don't like the fine oaks as what as much um, as the sherry cast. You know. Yeah, I mean, I haven't tried any of the new ones. It's actually not called fine oak anymore. It's that's my fault. It's it's called triple cask. I think it is. Right. Okay. Triple cask. Yeah, they rebranded the whole thing. Yeah. Right. So I, I'm wondering if they they've done anything to the liquid. If it's changed at all, I'd, I'd be curious to find out. Out of all of them, I like the 15 the most. So. Yeah. Yeah. The, yeah. The 12, the 15, they're okay. Um, but yeah, I think like a lot of people are talking about when they review the McAllen's, the 18s in particular, they're just saying, you know, more and more percentage of second fill casts, you know, it's not as rich, not as dark. They're just, you know, using those seasoned sherry casts now. And it's not, you know, it's not like it was back when they were bottling it and, you know, the late nineties, mid nineties yeah. kind of thing. Well, those single casks that they've released that nobody gets to see because they've only released a certain amount to New York and probably Hong Kong and then that's it. Um, those things fly off the shelf and then they automatically are like $2,000 for the 12 year old that's retail at like 250 American. So, right. Yeah. But those are dark. Those are super dark. Like, you're talking about the exceptional casks? That's right. Yeah. Yeah. You can tell that those are like legit sherry casks as mm -hmm. opposed to like seasoned sherry casks. Yeah, right, exactly. All right, moving on, uh, whiskey news. Um, Springbank announced a couple of releases coming out this week. Uh, the new Long Row Red. It's an 11-year Pinot Noir uh, from New Zealand. I think I got an image of it here. So this they're duplicating one of the releases, right? This. Pinot Noir was one of the previous Long Rows that was released. Yeah. there. Well, you own it, don't you? Yeah, I have it. Um, sorry, there it is. So yep. this one's coming in at 11 years old, 53.1% uh, ABV. So I think that's 0.3 more ABV, uh, one less year. They're going to retail it for 55 pounds. Um, so I don't know. I guess I got to buy it, right? Because, I mean... I'm collecting, what? I'm collecting all of them. So now I got, I'm kind of locked into every single release they come out with. <laughs> I, honestly, I, I have like zero hesitation when I buy, when Long Row releases the reds because I know they're going to be good. They've all been, they've all been stellar so far. Yeah. In my opinion. Uh, they've yeah. all been really, really good. I don't think any, any one of them have scored less than a A plus for me personally. So yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, like, super awesome whiskey. Um, Santa Cruzin, here's the unicorn whiskey. Cheers, buddy. A little gong for you. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Um, Good old Santa Cruzin. Santa Cruzin. Hope you uh, hope you got some luck in these giveaways tonight, my friend. Um, one more thing I just want to talk about quickly for whiskey news. Um, another thing from Springbank, they got a... Uh, 25 year old the new 25 year olds coming out there it is so this year they're doing oh, sorry, hold 
Forty-six percent ABV. It's a sixty percent sherry, forty percent rum cask finish. Twelve hundred bottles um, retailing for three hundred and seventy pounds. So the two thousand seventeen, the previous one, it used sherry, bourbon, and port. This one's just using uh, sherry and rum casks. That sounds delicious. That's I have yet to try a twenty-five-year-old Springbank. I was going to ask you, have you tried the twenty-five? I haven't. They're they're so expensive. They're like they start at like five hundred and fifty bucks, and yeah. that's and that's our favorite province prices too. So like right, right, yeah. I mean, I would love to try it. I mean, I'm sure it's great, great whiskey. Um, but yeah, that price point is tough, right? That's a, like that's like a try before you buy kind of thing. Absolutely. I mean, if you can, the, the problem is how often do we get to do that? <laughs> that's true. I mean, that's why like UK stores and UK liquor stores, even like Alberta liquor stores and American ones, you know, they have a lot of stuff available to try here in Ontario. We have what four locations that have tasting rooms. You can get a pour or something before you buy it. Yeah. Um, I've only been to two of them. I know there's one in Ottawa and I think there's one in Etobicoke somewhere as well. Right. So, all right. And lastly, in uh, whiskey news, Here's something for you, Rob, because I know you're a huge Diageo fanboy. <laughs> um, Johnny Walker is creating a new whiskey experience in Edinburgh. So what they have here is they're making a building. It's a seven-story, completely Johnny Walker-orientated um, whiskey travel experience. So they're investing $150 million into whiskey tourism, whatever that is. So I guess they're really pumping like the UK more or less in Scotland and I guess like Johnny Walker branding stuff. So it's going to have like bars. It's going to have a, a multi-sensatory imperative visitor experience, whatever the heck that means. So <laughs> there you go. Looks cool. It looks yeah. kind of vintage. Like, I guess they're using an older building. Or it's yeah, the they're, they're revamping a building. Yeah. Um, but yeah, 150 million pound investment into whiskey tourism. That's kind of crazy. But that does include, I think, 35 million pounds to revamp um, and reopen Brora and Port Ellen. So it'll be interesting to see when those whiskeys start coming out, how, uh, how they stack up to the old stuff. Well, didn't Johnny Walker just build a new distillery? Or, no, that doesn't make sense because they don't need a distillery. Who just built, Diageo just built a couple new distilleries or at least one major new distillery. Is this the thing that they're, the, is this what they're talking about? Because when McAllen did what they were doing, uh, I can't remember who it was, but someone else, someone else like topped the, the amount of money that McAllen put into making their new distillery. I'm Honestly. not sure. I don't I, Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I'm sure the whole whiskey boom, every single distillery is vamping up production. Yeah. I don't know. It'd be, uh, someone might know in the chat. <laughs> uh, Daryl's asking where are the four tasting locations? Um, so Summer Hill in Toronto, um, Cooper street, which is down by the docks in Toronto. And then the other two, I'm drawing a blank of where they are. You know, where Bloor, the other two are. Bloor and not Bloor and Islington, Bloor and something. Anyway, um, and then in Ottawa, and then one in Ottawa, yeah. So, Summer Hill is the big one. Cooper Street is a little bit smaller, but it almost has the same amount of bottles. And then I'm not sure the other ones haven't been there yet. They're pretty hey, Loch Ness, there Loch Ness with the super chat. Sorry, that was a little bit. There we go. <laughs> Thank you very much, sir. Appreciate it. Thank you. Um, could we just sing Oakville? Does Oakville have one? Maybe that maybe Oakville has one. Yeah, I'm not sure. No, uh, maybe that's possible actually. I, I wouldn't be surprised because Oakville has some heavy hitters. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. Eric Wade is saying that Port Ellen is being raised by Diageo, so maybe that's raised, the one. That raised from the dead. Yeah. Awesome. You know, I you know what I haven't had a Port Ellen yet. I haven't either. I haven't had a Brora or a Port Ellen. I've had a Brora, um, bottled by a Signatory. It was great. It was like a 1970, 1972 distillate, like 24 years old. It was awesome. Really good stuff. 
I think you have a pretty special Brora at your own house right now. <laughs> <laughs> I do have a very nice Brora sitting on the shelf. It was going to be cracked tonight, but I don't know. That bottle is so crazy that like, I don't feel worthy of even opening it. You know, like, I think, I think that's a 10,000 subscriber. 10,000 sub thing. Yeah. Okay. So like next um, week, pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So if you guys are like unaware of what happened to my channel, I'm sure most of you are, but the Johnny Walker video that I did, um, I can, I did the entire core range from the red to the blue. It completely blew up. It went like, I guess you'd say like viral as much as like a whiskey review can go viral. Um, it's up to like 305,000 views now. Subscribers just went through the roof. Um, at its peak, it was getting about 36,000 views a day. Um, it's back down to about 8,000 or so now, but absolutely insane. Um, subscribers went from like 600 to, you know, 5,000 in three weeks. It was just completely out of control. Well, how long uh, did you post that video now? I think I posted it like a good month ago. Um, and then it kind of took off once it was posted, I think about like two weeks after it was posted, it, went it just went crazy. And yeah, the last two, two to three weeks now has been been pretty epic on it yeah sure. well in the last like three weeks ish you've accumulated like 4800 subs and i've been like monitoring that video more than you have like I was, jerry is a goalie in like soccer and hockey yeah soccer and ball hockey yeah so he has like the typical like goalie mentality where like nothing phases him and like everything's like yeah whatever I guess that's good. I don't really know if that's good. But <laughs> whatever everybody else seems to be cheering, so I guess I should cheer. <laughs> that, that well, I feel like I feel like my personality is it's very kind of like mid level. Like I'm never too high, never too low. Kind of just you know fly it fly it in the middle. But yeah, yeah I mean good. you you keep texting me like oh your subscribers is up to this. I'll check it. I'm like damn that's just, that's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> well, like. For most of us in the whiskey industry, like ask ask the Scotch test dummies how long it took them to get to five thousand. Like it took me up until I think December to get to five thousand. You know what I mean? So you're you're killing the game, man. It's awesome. Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm the one hit wonder of the whiskey fabric. I'm <laughs> I'm the one uh, one video guy on uh, whiskey tube that just yeah. uh, lives off that for the rest of his life, kind of thing. <laughs> nah, I, honestly, I don't you it definitely benefits you to have that but you have awesome content there's like if these guys haven't checked it out already and some of these guys are have been brought in because of that johnny walker video they need to check out the rest of your videos because you've reviewed some incredible things and your content's awesome man so yeah well i appreciate that man thank you very much um i'm just gonna add some moderators to the chat not that we have like any crazies in the chat i don't see swami in there so probably won't need any work tonight <laughs> but, uh, um, Peter White is saying he wants a sample of that Talisker 8. Oh, the Talisker 8 year old. Well, you got to talk to Rob because I haven't gotten my bottle from him yet. Uh, oh, yeah. Well, anyway. Well, yeah, the one we're sharing. Um, it was, I was bringing it tonight and I haven't even, like, I've, I barely dipped into it, but I kind of want to go by your strategy and, like, wait till it's just around the halfway mark and get it back. So it's in the <laughs> <thing> <laughs> <laughs> yeah okay i guess i owe that to you i guess i owe that to you um <laughs> let's do a giveaway these guys have been here for a half hour they deserve some whiskey um i just want to mention one thing um if you're watching this uh on the, on the replay where it's not live um don't worry i do have a giveaway for everyone uh afterwards once this thing is just a regular video you'll have a chance to win another sample um but for right now let's go and do a Pappy 15. Let's do the giveaway. I'm going to ask a question. It's going to be the first one to respond in the chat. Now, keep in mind, um, this chat is delayed depending on where you're watching it. So I'm just going to go with whatever I see as first. So the winner is going to get a one ounce sample of Pappy Van Winkle. This is the 2015 bottling, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, 2015. Um, I reviewed it on the channel. Really awesome stuff. Great, great bourbon. So the is question that, is, is that a question that like I'm gonna know out of like or it's an unbiased, completely unbiased question. 
Yeah, so this is a question that you don't have to know anything about my channel to get right. You have to just know about Pappy Van Winkle Bourbon, really. Okay, so I'm going to lose anyway. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here's the question. What year did Buffalo Trace Distillery start producing the Van Winkle line of bourbons, including the Pappy 15? I think Peter White's going to get this one. So they took over from Stitzel Weller and started producing themselves in this year. Wow. Don't see it yet. Don't see it yet. No, no. This is when they actually started making the whiskey themselves at Buffalo Trace when they started production. No, nope, still don't see it. <laughs> Just keep guessing, guys. <laughs> Everybody's guessing. <laughs> I have no idea. Nope, still don't see it yet, guys. Still don't see it. Well, it'd have to be. I mean, they've been. Was like. It would have to be 23 years earlier than the first. Well, no, maybe it was sourced. There it is. 2002. 2002. Oh, wow. Mel got it. I was very close. I said Mel Bell. <laughs> yeah. So 2002. Uh, just so I'm not like making that number out of thin air. Um, here is the information. Um, here it is. So 2002 was when the Van Winkle brand started being distilled and bottled. Uh, by Sizzler at the Buffalo Trace Distillery. So this is when the Buffalo Trace actually started distilling, bottling, uh, with a joint venture from Old Rip Van Winkle. Old Rip Van Winkle. Um, if you look at a pappy, it says right on it, it says bottled by the Old Ram Winkle Distillery, which I guess is like in association with Buffalo Trace. So it's actually in the Buffalo Trace Distillery. They're actually doing it there. Well, Zach so, owns them all now anyway, right? Right. So congratulations, Mel. Um, email me at supersocialclub at gmail.com, and I'll get this sent out to you. This is, like, I, I, I went back to the Tosker 18 for a second dram because, wow. I, honestly, I love this whiskey. I think it's fantastic. And I think you're right. I think it might be better than the 25-year-old. Uh, <laughs> or you were like very close in mark. So yeah, I scored this what like a half mark less than twenty five. So right. almost so yeah. Based right on there. price, it's like you might as well just go with the eighteen. Absolutely, absolutely go with the eighteen. Yeah, for sure. Wow, I, honestly, I love it. It's phenomenal. <clears throat> I eighteen year olds kind of like are where my palate's like best, like uh, where it's at. I guess I don't know. I, I don't know why it's like it just it's got a certain amount of freshness to it it's a little bit more like i said to you it's a little bit more vibrant than like older whiskey mm -hmm. um, 18 seems to be the money zone for me yeah it seems like when whiskey just hits that peak and like it's perfect right like not too oaky nice vibrancy still delivers it's great stuff yeah i would like to see a lot more 18 year old cast strength whiskeys that'll be awesome Absolutely. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> Tim's in the comments. Must have missed it by seconds. You did just quite, you just, just missed it. Mel just had it maybe like a couple comments before you, but they were coming in so fast at the end. It was hard to keep track. Yeah. Um, let them know. I mean, guys, just because you, you see your name faster in the chat than another person, it, at the end of the day, it's all when Jeremy sees it, right? Because everybody's internet's like different speeds and stuff like that so you can actually show them if you wanted to go back to it and then screen share yeah you know I'll, maybe i'll just do a little uh actually you know what mel had it like one two three four five six like eight comments before you tim so yeah um eric wade is asking if i have wine bottles behind me i do i have probably a few that you would like eric um not that jeremy really cares too much about wine i don't think do you are you a wine guy I'm not a wine guy. Um, never really got into it. Not saying that I won't, um, but I got too much whiskey to drink, man. You can't leave, leave room for wine, you know? <laughs> well, honestly, like, it's kind of what's 
slowed me down in drinking wine because I would have a glass with my wife at dinner, no problem, very often. And then when I started the channel, I wanted to kind of make sure that I wasn't overdoing like alcohol as a whole. So if I'm going to have a drink of whiskey for sure that night, I would kind of avoid the glass of wine. Uh, so anyway, Eric, you probably recognize these, but uh, that's a Barolo right there. Uh, that's I, Michele uh, Chiarolo is the company. And then uh, Cesare uh, Amarone. So you probably know all about those. Eric, wait, for those of you that don't know, is a uh, wine sommelier. And also a whiskey reviewer. So Yeah. Yeah, Eric knows his stuff for sure. Actually, we had a funny conversation about how he's moving into whiskey now and all of his like sommelier friends are like shunning him from like uh, wine events and he can't go anymore. <laughs> <laughs> See, like, um, I don't understand that. Like, that makes no sense to me. Why? I, I, was th I think it was just kind of joking, but he said he did not, he didn't get an invite to like their most recent event or something. So that was pretty funny. Uh, Mall reviews in the house. I think that's probably Narby. Uh, he says, Talisker 18 is legit. Have you guys tried the 30 yet? No, I haven't tried the 30. And you know what? The guy had one up for sale. I think he wanted 500 US, which I thought was a great deal. And I didn't pull the trigger on it. And I'm kind of regretting it now. Yeah. So, I would love to know what the 30 is like. Yeah. Yeah. Talisker. I love Talisker. It's great stuff. Tim. Tim with the super chat, six ninety nine. Thank you very much, Tim. Here's a little gong for you, bud. Thank you. Really, really appreciate it. Liking that gong. It's cool. Yeah. <laughs> very Asian. Very uh, like. It's very feng shui. <laughs> it really adds to the uh, to my to my place. <laughs> um, BBJP has got to run. Jasper, thank you very much, man. Have a good one. Cheers, bud. So. Uh... I think it's Daryl is uh, is asking um, if I drink French wine. I've had a few. I really like. Um, I can't remember the name right now. When I think of it, I, I will write it in the chat. <clears throat> but there's a bunch I like. My parents were always into um, Kendall Jackson Chardonnay from California. Um, other wines that they like they were very like limited to what they like they picked a wine and they drank it just all all the time mostly california dry reds and dry whites i want to say i like honestly i really like california wine it's very different than italian and french wine and even spanish and argentinian wine it's it stands out it's very 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 different and i can kind of identify it's one of those few that i can actually identify the region pretty much almost every time I try it. Um, that does not happen with the rest of the wine that I try. So that can happen way more often with whiskey, but. Oh, we got another uh, super chat from uh, Kev Don, Dondi? Dong? Anyway, thank you very much. He wants to hear the gong. There you go, bud. Another gong for you. <laughs> uh, every, time hit, every, time hit the, every time I hit the gong, the cats just look at me like, what are you doing? <laughs> They're, they're so rattled right now. <laughs> Got a couple of cats chilling around. They're awesome. But yeah, <laughs> gong's not for them. <laughs> um, should we move on to um, this little blind, uh, semi-blind, I guess it is, tasting that I got going on here. You guys notice the dartboard. So what I've done, and with the help of Caitlin, my freaking super awesome girlfriend, um, I have taken 20 whiskeys from my cabinet. I'll show you the list here. Um, they're all kind of like sherried or have some kind of like sherry influence to them. So nothing's peated. Um, so they're kind of all on the same kind of playing field, I guess you could say. So here they are. I got 20 whiskeys. They're all poured into one ounce samples. What I'm going to do I'm going to pick someone from the chat. They're going to answer a trivia question. If they win, or whoever wins, sorry, is going to automatically win a sample from whatever you see here. From the, whatever 20 whiskeys, you get to pick one sample. Plus, I'll give you a Super Social Club uh, whiskey glass. Now, I'm pretty confident 
that no matter what one I pick, what one is delivered to me, I should be able to kind of tell you more or less which whiskey I'm drinking. They're all from my bar. I've had them all before. If I do not correctly guess which sample it is, I'm gonna double your prize. So you get to pick another sample, any one from the list if you want, I'll give you another glass. That's the challenge. I'm gonna start it off here. I'm gonna throw a dart. So like I said, 20 samples. Um, whatever I hit on the dartboard, it's gonna be the sample that Caitlin's gonna to provide to me. Like I said, she set this up for me blind. I have no idea which sample is which. I'm gonna to try to guess it. If I fail, you get double the prize. I'll throw this right now and see what we're dealing with here. Of course. Of course I missed it on the first try. Okay, here we go. Is it stick? Yep. All right, number nine. Number nine. Um, so let's do a little um, question in the chat here. Um, what did I have lined up for this one? This is cool, man. It's very cool. I think. This yeah, is you're liking this. I see. I wish you were here because, like, we could do it kind of together and kind of like each kind of make a guess. But would have been fun. We'll do it. We'll do it next time. We'll do it next time. Damn Canadian winters. <laughs> All right. Here, here's a question. Um, you'll know this if you watched my Johnny Walker video. In the Johnny Walker video. Um, the one that I did, the um, the core range, the what's the best Johnny Walker? After all the points were accumulated with adding and subtracting value points, which whiskey won for me? Which whiskey won? Not the green, not the double black. Nope, not the green. <laughs> <laughs> Mash and drum got it. Platinum. Platinum is right. 18 is also right. Um, 18, platinum. It's kind of the same thing. I guess they kind of renamed it to uh, to 18-year-old. But mash and drum, you're the first on my list. Yeah. Um, Kevin Doan, you're right behind him. So you know what? I'm going to give it to both you guys. Both of you guys are playing here. You're each going to win a sample from the list. Let me just throw it up there again. You're each going to win a glass. And then if I get this wrong... I'm going to double everything again and give you guys a whole nother sample and a whole nother glass. Um, just reminding you of the list. Where did I have it? Here it is. All right. So right now, you guys have won a sample. Take your pick, whatever you want from this list. Um, so I'm going to try sample number nine. And I'll throw this up again later if you guys want to take a look at it again. Um, so I'm going to try sample number nine. So is that is that an order of no? So that's not an order. That's just an alphabetical order. Um, so what I did, I had all the samples lined up, poured them all in sample jars. Caitlin then came by and labeled them all randomly. So all the samples are all randomly listed. She's the only one who has the master list of which one is which. So number nine could be any one of those. I don't know what one it is. Um, so come on, Caitlin, come on over here. Say hello to the camera. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> this is my partner in crime. Um, so she made this kind of happen for me. So what I've done is I've taken, I blacked out a glass. I just took electrical tape, just taped it all the way around here so it's completely blacked out. So I won't be able to see the darkness of the whiskey. So that's not going to be a tell. Um, Caitlin's going to pour it. I'm not going to look. I'm going to turn my computer away so I won't see anything in the chat. So she's going to pour that out. Um, I won't be able to see the color of the whiskey. Then she's going to take it and she's going to write down what whiskey it is and show you, just you guys only. So you'll know exactly what it is as I'm tasting it, as I'm going through it. And I'll see, uh, see if I can pick this out. Now, if I pick one of the Glendronics, I mean, I got the Glendronic 15, the 18, the 21, and an 11-year-old single barrel. I'm pretty sure I probably won't be able to determine which one of those, if I get one of those ones. Well, if you get the eight, uh, sorry, the 21, it's distinctly different than the other three. Yeah, sure. That, that one's got a little bit of PX in it. Um, so maybe I'll be able to pick that one out. There's two. Um, <laughs> and of course, you can't get the whiskey open. And and since uh, you turned your computer away, I will. You got to hit that gong because Swami uh, gave a super chat of $2. Swami Swab. Thank you so much, Swami. Thanks for joining me, man. Cheers.
There's a little gong for you, bud. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Good to have you in the chat. All right. So she's got it open. And pour it out. Mm. That Talisker is gangster. Uh, and uh, Kev is telling me, hey, Rob, no helping. So I'm not going to help. Don't <laughs> I don't know how you could be a help anyway, but. I'm on Caitlin's side anyway, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> okay, so now, yeah. So Caitlin's going to show you guys what she poured. So only she knows. I'm just going to look away. I won't see. I'll tip my head down here. So she'll show you. Just make sure the camera focuses so you can see what it is. Okay. I don't know if it's picking up. Can you guys see that? Yeah, we got it. All right, great. <clears throat> okay. Okay. I'll turn the computer back towards me now. All right. So you guys know what it is. It's so tempting to want to say something. I have no idea. Oh, yeah. I should hide the chat. Okay. Let me hide the chat so I'm not tempted to see in case you guys talk about it. All right. So I can't see the chat. All right. Here we go. While you guys are uh, watching Jeremy torture himself, He's, I feel like he'll get this one. Um, which one should I go at next? The Octomore 9.3 or the Macallan Edition 4? For those of you in the chat, you guys get to choose. So what do you got there? So what I'm thinking on the nose here, I'm getting a lot of like barrel char smokiness on it. So I'm going to say fireball. <laughs> <laughs> that would be a hilarious prank if she just gave me fireball. Although I know right, right away, obviously. So it looks like Octomore is the winner. That was the first one that was said, and it seems to be majority at the moment. So. I would vote Octomore as well for you. All right. I'm going Octomore. Fresh glass. So this is... It smells like it's well aged for sure. I mean, my first impression is kind of like older sherry. I'll chase didn't see. It's nice. It's really good whiskey. Really, really good. Sorry? That's your big, yeah. Yeah, help yourself. <laughs> Eric Waite wanted me to crack open the Amarone. I think we're actually going to crack that one open on uh, Thursday night with a steak, my friend. I think you'd appreciate that. Rob, what do you think of this glass, eh? You know how the Scotch test cool. dummies, like, dipped it in black? Yeah. No, that's really cool. That's a smart idea. Magical tape. Yeah. Yeah, I thought it, was, I thought it turned out pretty well. If, if you really want to make it Canadian, you should do it in hockey tape. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're right. You're totally right. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm, I have an idea of what I think it is. But again, I could be super wrong. And Daryl's giving us the update of the Leaf score, which is 1-1. One, one. I actually have it. If you guys – I'm not, trying not to be rude. I'm looking in the corner – Every once in a while, I have it on silent. The Leaf game's on in the background. Focusing on Jeremy, though. Okay. I think I'm ready to make my prediction. So we'll see. So should we start with, like, region? Like, what region? No. I'm just going to say what I think it is. And if I'm right, I'm right. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong. All right. I think you're going to be right. I'm going to say that this is the Belvini Ton 1401 Batch 6. Ding, 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 ding. All right. You get to hit the gong or? <laughs> um, yeah, that whiskey is a bit of a giveaway. I mean, I, I love that whiskey. I thought it was really, really good. And I get that, like, distinctive um, sherry, old sherry, and that, like, ex-bourbon kind of, like, um, that oak. I don't It's not oak. It's, like, a smoky char that I get from... The same thing I had when I tried the Belvini 25 single barrel. I get that exact same note in this whiskey. It's like gunpowder gun powder that you always talk about. Uh, maybe later. Yes, the gunpowder. The gunpowder note. That's what I get. And I knew you were going to get it because I knew how much you love that whiskey. And when I saw it, I was yeah. like, ah, this, 
This is rigged. <laughs> um, so sorry, guys, that um, unfortunately you're not going to get double the prize, but you do get to choose any one of those. So let me throw it back up there. Um, you That's did it. You get a whiskey glass. Here's the whiskey glass. It's a I sip and I know thing. Super Social Club whiskey glass, and any choice of which one you want. Um, there's a couple decent ones in there. Something you maybe never had before. So there's a list. Um, that Amory with Spectrum 004, that's a very interesting whiskey. That one is like a bit of a chameleon for me. It kind of goes uh, back and forth. Like I, one time I try it, it tastes completely different from the next time I try it. It's really interesting. Um, the Bovini Tan 141 obviously is, uh, I really like it personally. Um, there's some Cal or sorry, uh, Highland Park 25 up there. If you haven't tried that one, it's pretty decent. And the Cavalan Oloroso, that's a Cava fan pick. So that's a barrel pick by Cava fan. Um, also really good stuff. That's very good. The Glen Burgie up there is really good too. Yeah. So that Glen Burgie, that's a uh, bottle by Asta Morris. Um, that thing is crazy. That thing is like unfiltered. Um, it's like not even like paper filtered. There's still like remnants of the cask in that bottle. It's really crazy. It's like, it's actually over sherry. Like if a whiskey can be over sherry, that's it. It's like, it's just thick sherry to the point where you're like, it's almost too much. If you don't like sherry bombs, you're going to hate that. Cause it's uh it's a sherry bomb for sure. So did you guys pick, you guys know what you want? Belvini ton for mash and drum. Yeah. Good pick. And, um, who else won? Sorry, now I forget who else won it. Oh man, um, you there was, there was two. So it was Mash and Drum and the guy right under him that said eighteen. It was uh, Kev Don, Donned, Hold Kev Don. Let me just double check. Yeah, Kev Don. So Jason's taking the Balvini ton. And oh, okay, he's still thinking. Okay. All right. All right. Well, still ponder it. Let me know. Um, let me know what you pick, and uh, I'll get those to you. Just like uh, um, Jason, I got your information. Just uh, kept on um, email me club at gmail.com. I'll get that out to you. I'm sorry that I'm destroying your last name. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, I'm horrible with names. I'm horrible with names. Oh, this is good whiskey. I like this a lot. Yeah, you got a good pour there. <clears throat> yeah. So this 9.3 is really good. Mm -hmm. But I feel like every year it's gone down a little bit in quality. Like 6.3 is for me like a 9.5 out of 10. Then you got like the 7.3, which is like a 9 out of 10. And then you have like, okay, maybe not 9.5 out of 10, but you know what I mean. And then uh, 8.3, a little bit lower, 9.3, maybe at par, maybe a touch higher than the 8.3, but not much more. Yeah, see, for me, the 6.3, definitely my favorite for sure. Um, 7.3, 8.3 kind of took a little bit of a dive, but then 9.3 brought it right back up. I thought the 9.3 was not as good as a six but almost almost there so and then the point the point ones have been disappointments for sure the 6.1 i loved and then everyone since then is just not been as good for sure the of first course. video you did on my channel was an octomore video right uh, we did uh 6.3 we did the sixes the seven and the eights didn't we yeah yeah we did six one six two or sorry six one six three seven one seven three so no, the eights weren't in it, but um, I rewatched it recently, and my reaction to the seven point three was as good, if not maybe even a bit more than the six point three. Okay. <clears throat> and the only other time I've tried the seven point three was that time. So I really want like I just bought a bottle of the seven point three. I'm really curious to crack it because I'm I want to know I want to know if I like it better. Um, 7.4 was a big favorite for you, right? Like the, really uh, like the 7 uh, which was virgin oak. Yeah. It's virgin oak, but the, it also has like a mixture of wine casks in there as well. That's why I love Brook Lottie because like in a time like it is right now where sherry casks are at a premium price, 
they go out, they source all these like different wine casks that you may not have heard of, and they just work with their spirit like so so well, and just like all their stuff like those new Port Charlottes, the MCO one. Man, that's such a great whiskey. I love that whiskey a lot. I'm gonna review that with the uh, the MCR one, whatever the other one is coming up soon. Do a head to head. If I can find, uh, and I know where I can find a few more MCO ones, I probably am going to stock up just because it's one of those whiskeys that, like, I love it. Like, it's fantastic. Like, every time I pour it, I'm never disappointed. You know, like, there's, like you said about that Amrud uh, 004, it's, it's a chameleon. Some days it's like, wow, this is incredible. And then other days it's like, eh, it's okay. You know what I mean? That does not happen at all with the MCO one. It's always good. Yeah, I agree. I love that MCO one. Um, I bought another bottle just to keep because I think I'm going to be going to that bottle pretty heavily. It's great stuff. It actually reminds me a lot of Octomore. It is. It's it's like an Octomore. It's an Octomore in my opinion. Yeah. Uh, a couple guys had head out. Uh, whiskey friend, thanks for coming by, man. Appreciate it. Swami, cheers, man. Have a good one. Take it easy. Cheers, Swami, cheers, Alan. Take care, guys. Um. So. I got to say pretty epic show so far, but I mean, you got these beautiful whiskeys staring at me and a couple <laughs> of them have been poured. So you got to at least nose the art, the art bag and let me know what's. It's been, I know I was, I've been looking at it. It's very tempting. I mean, Caitlin came by and just grabbed her and she's like, I'm drinking this. So she's already, <laughs> she's already got on it. I remember um, when we were at spirit of spirit of Toronto, Caitlin's like, uh, where's the art bag table? Cause <laughs> she's like, where's up. Pete? Show me the pee. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. was it that night that they were like highlighting from Ardbeg? Um, no, 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 no. You know what it was? It was a uh, compass box. It was the compass box, no name. Yeah. That's right. Which had Ardbeg in it, right? Yeah, it was like half Ardbeg, half. Uh... Oh, now I can't think of the other one. Half whatever, because it doesn't matter, because all Caitlin cared about that night was the other <laughs> <laughs> yeah she's a peat head at heart for sure yeah that's cool so i'm using this um this really cool glass by um final touch and this has like it's almost like a wine decanter i don't know if you can see that mm -hmm. so it's got the really big like base on it very big grip in the middle yeah yeah so it really like it really like gives a lot of air to the whiskey when it's sitting in there believe it or not my parents bought six of those. Oh yeah, nice. Because I gave them two Glen Cairns, and they're like, "Well, that's not enough, really." Like when you guys come over, you and your brother, because I have three brothers, you and your brothers, and then some of your uncles, they all drink whiskey. Like I don't want them like not getting a whiskey glass. So it actually it was like a proud moment for me as a son because I was like, "Wow, they actually like watch my channel a little bit. They know that glass." <laughs> 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 They know enough not to buy you like whiskey stones or that kind of stuff. Yeah, exactly. Why don't you like pour it in that like huge tumbler there, you know, over there? <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, so straight away on the nose, you're almost getting this like really like vibrancy off of it, which I was not expecting. Like you pick up some peat, you pick up some like mustiness in it. I don't know, like the ratio of sherry to ex bourbon. I mean, it looks like it's got a little of both. It's not super dark, but it's not super light either. No, and it's it's brought down to 40. So I'd say there's definitely sherry in there. Yeah, so it's 40% ABV, which is super, super low for a bottling by, well, I don't know, maybe that's not super low. Like. Maybe bottles back then, they bottled them at 40% ABV. I know I've seen a couple for, at 43%. There is some cash string stuff out there as well, but. It's rare though. Back then, like it was very hard to, in Ontario alone, like it wasn't even allowed. You couldn't even buy something at 40% at one point. Really? Like above 40%. Wow, that's interesting. Yeah. At one point in Ontario, you weren't allowed to buy anything above 40 But you definitely smell the age in this. You can definitely smell that it's an older spirit. Because you get that mustiness, you get like that dust almost. But I think this is far from opening up. It still smells really, really tight. It's been open for almost 
I mean, what you poured it as soon as the, the show started or no? Yeah, it's been sitting here for what, like 45 minutes at least. Because we're rounding into an hour. Right. And um, it's been open for quite some time. But I mean, number one, it's a 1970s distillate, no? Yeah, this was distilled in 1974, fallen in 1996. So it's going to need some time. Like it's been sitting in that bottle for years. Yeah, it's been sitting in the bottle for, what, like 20, 25 years almost. I got into this a little bit um, the other day. So <clears throat> Horace Looning does a video where he talks about how he doesn't believe oxidization actually happens uh, to whiskey. And his reasoning for that is the fact that there's oxygen in barrels when the whiskey's inside. And um, I, at first I thought about it, I'm like, yeah, that's a really good point. He makes a lot of sense. But then I really like just sat and thought about it for one day. And um, my conclusion to what he was saying is he's wrong because the wood interaction with the whiskey is constantly moving it around, constantly changing it. It's not getting the opportunity to oxidize. It's not just sitting there and uh, absorbing oxygen. Yeah, oxygen is playing a factor in what's happening with the whiskey, but it's not – uh, the sole factor and that the wood is the major influence while in the cask. Then it gets like vatted, which if people don't know what that is, it's literally sometimes they just like pour a bunch of casks into a huge plastic vat or metal vat before bottling. And then they bottle. So the whiskey is doing all kinds of things that it's not used to be like not used to doing. It's basically been sleeping for years and then, told to like run a marathon in like a 24 hour span. So sure. Yeah. Bottled, goes through all this like chaos and it essentially is in like shock is in a shade of, uh, in a state of shock when it gets bottled. And that's why oxygen really helps like bring it back to what it's supposed to be. I think. Yeah. I mean, I think every single one of us knows when a whiskey gets drank down, it changes in the bottle. I think if you've all had experience with that, um, especially stuff that's cast strength, especially stuff that's peated as well, you definitely notice either it gets like, it rounds out, it gets a little more mild, it opens up more. Um, so to say that a whiskey doesn't change from the, the time you pour the neck pour, the time you pour the last dram, I don't know. I mean, is, he, is, he, is this argument that it's just your palate that's changing and Every, every time you drink it, it's a little bit different because you're a little bit different each time. Is that essentially his, his logic on that? So I'm not sure like what his motive is behind uh, like his argument, but he's trying to say that it doesn't affect the whiskey at all. It won't change it. You don't have to let it sit in the glass. Um, you can just pour and play. And the reason I think he, he says that is because every time he starts a video, he opens up a bottle, pours it into the glass, and reviews it. So he's, it's in his best interest. Otherwise, like hundreds of his videos are like now deemed obsolete because. <laughs> you know I mean? um, well, Alan in the comment is saying he thinks that Horst is saying that 18 year olds and older tend not to oxidize as much as maybe like a younger whiskey would. I think it, it slows down for sure. Like I would agree with him there where like a cash tank whiskey, A, it takes a lot longer to oxidize than a 40 or 46% whiskey. Would you agree there? Sorry, say that again. So a cast strength whiskey takes a lot longer to oxidize than like a 46, 43, 40% whiskey, in my opinion. Yeah, I think like in my experience, that has been the case before. Sure. Yeah. And I mean, I don't know the science behind it and I could be completely wrong and I, can like be way off base but i don't know it definitely changes the whiskey even in the glass we've experienced it ourselves like you pour an octomore let it sit for 30 minutes it's a different whiskey when you first pour it and when you have it 30 minutes later yeah absolutely without a doubt 100 percent, that's true um 
Loch Ness is saying, does the neck pour and the heel pour change if you drink it in one night? <laughs> uh, I mean, <laughs> unless you're sharing that, there's no way of you knowing because you'll probably be on the floor, but uh, that would be a good experiment. I mean, I have with friends taken down a whole bottle in one night, but I mean, we're talking like at least, at least 10 people. Yeah. yeah. Honestly, it's all the only difference between the neck pour and the heel pour is when you're pouring it <laughs> so if you're pouring it in the same night there's not going to be any difference in my opinion if right. you're pouring it like months apart then obviously you're going to get a significant difference i would think okay so here's my thoughts on this whiskey first of all it knows is very very light it's very light very light and characteristic you get like i said like a lot of like must, you get a, just a tad of peat, almost you get that really like musty, earthy kind of peatiness to it, but it's very, very mild. You definitely pick up some sherry and some ex bourbon. So I'm gonna have to say that this is a little bit of both, maybe. I'm getting a little bit of like, I don't know if I wanna call it like red fruits, but maybe like a little bit of like prune in there, cranberry perhaps. You had a gong, bro. This is, uh, oh my goodness. Oh, Ben, he's asking when I'm going to open up that compass box circus. Well, thank you for the super <laughs> <I get there. laughs> Um, compass box circus. You know what? That was on the list of whiskeys to open up tonight. It was kind of between that, this one and that Brora, um, that Brora, I, I'm not in the mindset yet. I mean, that whiskey is a freaking big boys whiskey, and I'm not, I don't think I'm on that level. Like, I'm so intimidated to open that bottle. That's uh, life changing right there. Right? I don't know. But um, I'm excited for that, for that, for that uh, circus because I've heard it's like really nice sherried whiskey, and I love sherried stuff. So, I mean, um, if that's like, Bro, that Brora, what was it, the 38-year-old, wasn't it? Yeah, 38-year-old, distilled in uh, 1978. Yeah, so, I mean, there's only, like, a few special occasions that that, like, that qualifies that kind of quality whiskey. I know, and, like, I feel like, uh, I mean, I love to share that. I love to share that experience on a live because I think it would be awesome to see. But at the same time, I just want to, like, sit by myself in like an isolation chamber with like no one around me and like no noise and like no light even and just like drink the whiskey and just like experience it just you know as it is and without any distractions whatsoever yeah peter white's gonna help me with the brora because he's a nice guy <laughs> <laughs> we gotta get together peter white we gotta we gotta fucking we gotta hook up man yeah no peter white we'll do it if if possible we can do it at my place because he's been actually has he been he hasn't been to the new house yet but he's been to my old house which is like a few minutes up the road from my um new house so we'll, we'll like my house will be the meeting place he doesn't want to go on camera which i've tried to convince him a few times but <laughs> it's not gonna happen so that's fine we should just get together for a dram i think it'd be great i mean i know you got some stuff oh eric wait Coming in with a huge super chat. Thank you very much, Eric. Appreciate that. Um, awesome live show. Um, Eric actually kind of like inspired me to open this one because he's doing the Pete Week or sorry, the Pete Month on his channel. I went on there last Friday. We did the uh, Art Big Dark Hope Committee release. Great whiskey. Um, had a super fun time talking about music and stuff. Did you know uh, Eric used to be a big Beatles fan? Big Beatlemania guy. He used to have super long hair. Go out, Beatlemania to the max. That's awesome. <laughs> Beatles are awesome. I have mad respect for the Beatles. <laughs> um, so, yeah, Isla Month. Sorry, not Pete Month. Isla Month. Strictly Isla Scotches. Cool. That'll be fun. Um, so, I'm, I'm subscribed to Eric Waite, both of his channels now, but you were asking me why I didn't realize that they were live the other day and i was like yeah i didn't get any notifications for that <laughs> so what i realized was i was subscribed to the wine channel <laughs> but not <laughs> to the whiskey channel so he has two channels for those of you watching right now 
One is a wine channel, one is a whiskey channel. Um, make sure you're subscribed to both because I made that mistake. We've gone live together and he was using the old wine channel. I think in the last like six months or so, he's changed it to like separate the, the two. Yeah. 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 You got to subscribe to both. Uh, Loch Ness is saying he's only a half hour drive away. So yeah, definitely Loch Ness come over. I'm inviting you to Rob's house. You're, you're welcome. <laughs> yeah, that would be awesome. Yeah, I would definitely love to see, uh, meet Loch Ness in person, actually, because that would be cool. Yeah. Actually, like, really what we should do is a, like, Sipper Social Club Whiskey in the Six event. Uh, like, what we were planning, like, what I was kind of planning with last year's Whiskey in the Six event, but, like, kind of didn't, like, work out the way I wanted it to work out. And, obviously, uh, time constraints and all these other things – uh, but what we should do is plan something now or, I don't know, at least like three to six months in the future and try to get everybody in Ontario there and whoever else is like willing to make the flight, make the drive, make the train, whatever, to get there. You know what I mean? No, absolutely. And um, I know Swami was saying he wanted to do something like that in Montreal. I think it'd be awesome. I mean, I'd love to, to meet everyone that's, you know, always in the chat. Um Awesome stuff. You know what? A good opportunity for that is even uh, um, Toronto, um, Spirit of Toronto, the Spirit that's of Toronto. That's, that's coming up. That's coming up in uh, the beginning of May. I think tickets go on sale next month. So I'm definitely going to be there. Rob, I'm pretty sure you're probably going to get tickets again. Yeah. Um, I know a couple guys that reached out to me. They're saying if we're going to go again this year. And yeah, definitely we'll be there. So if you're in the GTA, you want to go to a pretty decent whiskey festival. Spirit Toronto is pretty good stuff. Um, you got to get on there early and get yourself um, a master class because those things sell out quick and they're always really, really good. Do you know who's going to be in the master class this year? Or? I don't know. I should really reach out to like Jamie Johnson and see if Belvini is going to be there or, you know, Cam. See if, uh, you know what? McAllen never really shows up there, do they? Um, I have Cam wasn't there last year. Um, and I didn't see Jamie either, actually, to be honest with you. I didn't see Jamie. I didn't see uh, Beth. So, it, right, yeah. I, quite so, a few Jamie Belvini, she wasn't there last year. She was there the previous year. So, I did I did the master class with her that year. And uh, she she brought awesome whiskey. You know what she brought to that master class? She brought the Belvini 25 year old single barrel. She brought the Ton 1509 batch three. Wow. She brought. Um, like um, the 10 year old founders, no, was it wasn't founders reserve. Damn, I can't think of it now. The 10 year old Belvini that was like an, a discontinued bottle that she found in the UK because all these uh, brand ambassadors, they got to pay for the whiskey themselves. I mean, I'm sure they get a budget, but they still got to go out and source it and buy it. And that's what they bring to the tastings. And she came through with a huge lineup. So she's awesome. I like her a lot. Jamie Johnson's honestly, like, I don't think I've met an uncool ambassador like the ambassador of glenn morangy and ardbeg is this really really cool guy named bry um he's from scotland what's funny is uh, my wife trish was pregnant um we went to the pop-up shop uh lcbo she clearly only goes to these things for me because she has no interest in any of it uh so she's pregnant we go to the pop-up shop lcbo downtown toronto uh, I'm sitting beside Bry right before he gets a job with Art Beg and Glenn Morangy. And we're talking, and he's like, yeah, I'm a big whiskey fan. I'm from Scotland, obviously. He, like, clear Scottish accent. He's like, um, we should hook up. We should get on, like, you know, do a live. He's like, I recognize you from your channel, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, yeah, that would be awesome. I would love to have you on, whatever. It just didn't work out. And still to this day, we're trying to like work out a day where we can actually get together and have a have a live. But um, like everybody I've met in the whiskey industry has been really really cool. Especially like a bunch of these ambassadors, which they have like a super cool life. And yeah, I mean, I know their I know their job is like pretty demanding, like a lot of you know tastings, a lot of travel, everything like that. But at the end of the day, you're talking about whiskey with people who are interested about whiskey. You're drinking whiskey all the time. I mean, it sounds pretty awesome to me. And you're traveling the world too. Like you're not just yeah, I travel the world. Absolutely. You know, 
So it's you know, uh, I think um, Jamie was talking about a really cool experience she had at Belvini because obviously they brought her to Belvini when she first got the job as ambassador. Sure, the robe she got to do, like go on like the malting floor and like shovel malt around and do all this cool stuff and um, try all these awesome Belvinis. Like it's really for really awesome stuff, I think for sure. So but, um, I have a funny story about Jamie. Sorry, you wanted to get onto something? I was gonna give away a sample, but yeah, do your story first, and then and then I'll get to it. Okay, so uh, Jamie comes onto my channel probably about a year and a half ago, maybe a little bit less. <clears throat> And I actually went to her house. We filmed there. Uh, she pulls out like crazy whiskeys, like a 21 year old uh, Balvenie Madeira, 25 year old Balvenie, 30 year old Balvenie, like crazy stuff. And we filmed the video. She has them all like lined up beautifully on, on her coffee table. We're sitting in front of the camera. We're sitting on the couch, looking at the camera, talking about these whiskeys, tasting these whiskeys, all these different things. We go way longer than we anticipate, like about an hour and a bit. Um, video's over. I start watching it just to like make sure it was okay. And notice that the the bottles were like completely out of the shot the entire oh, no. Yeah, I remember that. I remember that. You could just see like the top, just like the, this part of it. Oh man, that was such a nightmare. Like thank God we actually like picked up the bottle and showed it, but right. Yeah, <laughs> it was devastating. It was devastating. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure her whiskey cabinet's got some pretty nice stuff in it, especially some good old Balvinis for sure. Yeah, so yeah, she actually had a, a pappy 15 year old as well. So nice, which is pretty cool. Which her husband won in the lottery. Yeah, um, from if anyone's from Ontario, how'd you guys do in the LCBO lottery this year? I struck out. Big time. Didn't win a single thing. I know, Rob, you got something. I won a William uh, and William LaRue Weller. So I did all right. right. Yeah, solid. Yeah, I know a couple of guys from Toronto Whiskey Society. They won a couple of things, a stag, um, a handy. No pappies, though. Um, maybe like a 10-year-old Van Winkle in a loppy, but none of, the, none of the big pappies. Pretty sure it's a rumor. Like, they only go to, like, high-end executives like i really don't believe that they actually i know the, the whole system is rigged god damn it it's got to be i mean like there's no way that you wouldn't actually at least hear about somebody winning a pappy if i don't know at least just scored again so i got distracted <laughs> <laughs> all right um i'm gonna give away a sample of this art bag so i've been sipping on it the finish is absolutely amazing on this and you're picking out all these like subtle flavors the balance is really good the peat very very in the background um you definitely notice it when your palate dries a bit you pick up that peat but there's like there's honey in here there's a little bit of sherry influence a little bit of caramel it's almost got a little bit of everything it's really hard to describe it's like it's hard to describe this whiskey just because I haven't really had anything like it before. You know, like I've had, I've had one old Ardbeg before, but not, it's not, it doesn't taste anything like this. So is it what, like, what's the texture like? It's very, it's like, it's, it's very mouth coating, but I, the viscosity doesn't seem like it's that, that big i mean obviously bottle at 40 percent abv it does have decent viscosity like you can see the legs kind of like slowly slowly pooling here but it does stick with you like the finish on this does last for it's very long finish for sure i'm wondering i mean when i first heard the date that that was distilled i thought it, would, it probably was a little bit older um but I do wonder how close to cash rank that is because I've heard of like 20 year olds being 48% cash rank. You know what I mean? So it's possible that that's higher. Yeah, I mean, it is possible that this came out of the cask at like, you know, 45% or whatever it could be. Yeah. Um, it's hard to say. Cause like, obviously Gordon McPhail, I don't know if you can, I don't know if there's a way of knowing if this is an Ardbeg cask or if it's a Gordon McPhail cast. 
are all Gord McPhail bottlings their own casts? Are some of them purchased casts? Are they just distillate that they put in their own? I don't, I don't know if you really ever know that, you know? Uh, so impossible to know, but I would assume that most of them, if not all of them, are like directly from the distillery, to be honest with you. Well, like, if you look at like if you look at the uh, the Gordon McPhail um, Mortlock that we got, that yeah. was the Gordon McPhail barrel. It says it right on the bottle. Really? It says that on the. So do they all say like? Does this one say anything about that on the label? No. No, this has no information about about the cast type at all. Um, but I remember that Mortlock that we had. It definitely says that it's been matured in a Gordon McPhail barrel. Cause I'm assuming like SMWS does a single cask of pretty much everything and it's always cast strength. So, or at least they, they say it's always cast strength. I, I haven't experienced anything otherwise, but um, mm -hmm. I would assume that they just, it's so much easier to just like pick a cask. This is good. We'll take that. And they bottle it right away. You know what I mean? So like, I think they actually have like, stock of these barrels I, I, mean, I think that i think that maybe like in some in, cir in some circumstances they definitely source barrels themselves and then they go out and buy distillate and just fill up their own barrels yeah um you know i guess a lot of times uh, distilleries can definitely sell you some distillate they might not want to sell you a barrel you know that's true so i don't know it's hard i don't know how to tell i don't know what ones are what ones aren't it's just if it says it on the label then it says it on the label and this one doesn't so i don't know um i wanted to get into just talking a little bit about older distillate whiskeys like this one from the 70s because if you look at reviews of the big guys out there like surge from whiskey fun you look at all these old bottles from the 1960s 1970s and how they're getting like huge huge scores and why those whiskeys are so kind of highly regarded um, versus kind of stuff that's coming out today. And I kind of did a little bit of research. I emailed Narby because Narby obviously is the leading guy that I know that's tried old, old whiskey from the 60s and 70s. Yeah. And he pretty much just said that during that time, the whiskey was coming in more demand. Um, the US market and the Japanese market were uh, buying up more older, expensive whiskeys. So the production methods kind of got a little bit more refined, um, more like tightly kind of controlled, um, and they want to just make the best whiskey possible. And I think from that point, when they started in you know the eighteen twenties or whenever the whenever they kind of started making whiskey, up until that point, they kind of like perfected it and got it to the point where they could really make the best spirit. Um, they were sourcing better barley at that time. Um, and then the casks, obviously the casks that they were sourcing were just epic at that time, right? They were getting all these old sherry casks that have held sherry, you know, for 20, 30 years. They weren't, you know, having to re-season casks at that time because there was an abundance of, of good old sherry casks. Yeah. yeah and one cool. thing I wanted to share too, which I found, which I think is really interesting, is the wood. And just the wood that was being used to make casks back in the day is just a lot different than probably what you see now. Like here's an example of a piece of lumber from, you know, the early 1900s versus one this year, or sorry, last year. And you can see the number of just grains in the wood, right? Like you're getting old sourced wood. Whereas like nowadays you're getting like, you know, uh, freshly cut down trees that have been alive, you know, for, 20, 20 years. years versus yeah. stuff that yeah like way well before so that definitely could that could definitely play a part in it for sure like that old wood um definitely making a difference in the whiskey as well yeah i mean um don livermore from wisers always talks about how the wood is like what like 90 percent of what happens to the whiskey or something like that like maybe sure. maybe more um McCallan talks about how their casks are the best because wood is what matters. So I think that's that's a great point, actually. The, the fact that, um, you know, dozens of years ago, they were using much older wood than they are now. That makes a big 
difference as far as like what the whiskey is going to taste like now. Yeah, definitely. For sure. All right. Let's give some of this away. Um, so one ounce sample of the Ardbeg, um, 22 year old, 1974 distillate. Uh, the question is going to be super easy. First one to answer correctly, obviously gets it. Um, Ardbeg's 2015 special release. What was it called? This was their 200th anniversary. They had a special release that year. What was it? You know this, Rob? Um, I think I do, but it, I'm like debating between two or three, actually. <laughs> I'm going to the McAllen number four just to appease the people that were asking for this one as opposed to the Ardbeg. Uh, it was not the Grooves, not Supernova, not Dark Cove, not the Kelpie. You got to think a little bit older, 2015. Yeah, that's it. Perpetrium. That's crazy. You got it, man. Good job. Perpetrium yeah. was uh, the 2015. It was the 200th anniversary one. They released a lot of bottles of that. Um, I liked it. A lot of people were kind of like him and Han about it, but I thought it was pretty good whiskey. Yeah, I never had a chance to try the Perpetuum because, like, a lot of people, um, they just trashed it. Yeah, a lot of people did trash it. Um, I thought it was decent. I have a bottle. I actually, I haven't tried it in like, well, since probably 2016. I have a bottle of it unopened. I'll crack that one day. But yeah, Perpetuum. Um, so the first, that's crazy. You were the first person to get it. So congratulations. I'll pour you a sample of that. Um, what do you have in the chat right now? Do you know? We were looking around. We like when I we have 61 right now. We were at like 65 at one point, so yeah. pretty solid. That's awesome. Uh, oh, Narby's weighing in. Some distilleries, including McAllen, uh, bought back casts from Gordon McPhail after the whiskey boom. GM definitely bought some epic casts back in the day. That's crazy that um, McAllen would like buy back casts from them. Yeah, well, I guess. They always talk about how they're running out of whiskey, right? They're running out of like quality sherry casks and all these different things. So, I mean, I can definitely see why they would want to do that. I wonder how much money they lost from the sale of the cask, like the rebuying of the cask. Hmm. I'm sure a lot. I'm sure they lost a lot of coin doing that. Probably a shit ton because, I mean, Depends but then again, how. but then again, McAllen charges a huge amount for their product, so maybe they didn't lose that much money, you know? That's a good point. Well, they didn't lose, but they ended up spending like if they would have kept it in stock, like in stock, as opposed to like I guess the better question is like what could have they made? Like what would they have made if they just kept it in stock? Yeah, sure. Like bottom line, net profit, definitely a big loss there for sure. Yeah. 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 Well. We should have, we should have been born back in like you know way earlier. We should go back in time and just take a bunch of whiskey casts with us. We should point um, Narby in the direction of that site we discovered earlier because I think he would go to town. Narby knows about that site. You don't think he knows about it? Oh, he probably knows about it. <laughs> of course, he knows about it. He knows every site there is. That's true. <laughs> if you guys haven't checked out uh, malt reviews, go check them out. Uh, they review just epic, epic bottles like nothing you've ever seen before. They're like one of my favorite YouTube reviewers for sure. Malt reviews, go check them out. They do awesome stuff. Yeah. No, I mean, like their first video was the 50 year old Downmore, right? Yeah. It was like yeah. a two part, it was a two part video of this like beyond epic whiskey, like beyond like just monster whiskey. So. <laughs> Yeah, just absolutely amazing, amazing stuff. Um, and they do, they have all those old spring banks that are so good. And I don't know, I'm super jealous of them because they have, they have everything. And they bought it like back when, before it was like super crazy. I'm sure they paid a lot. But nowadays, if you buy those bottles again, those old spring banks, you're looking at like $20,000 for a bottle, you know? It's, you know what, like it's nowadays you have to find younger whiskey that's a gem like you got to be on top of the long grow reds the like deanston special releases like those kind of whiskeys that like are rare but they're young because 
those are the ones that are skyrocketing in price and like you actually have an opportunity to buy them at retail now you know what i mean like yeah and those whiskeys are all great and those are definitely the whiskeys that you gotta like source out and find because they're awesome they're good at a young age they're not expensive when they first come out and they're awesome whiskey yeah like people went crazy about that like bunahaben px for example that was like a so many people would pay like crazy money for that it came out at like a reasonable price instantly like after like it sold out went to like pretty obscene prices on secondary but i mean if you can capitalize on those kind of whiskeys prior to like the boom of them then you're you're both well yeah i mean again look at mccallan edition one right like perfect example of a whiskey that just went absolutely insane on the secondary market yeah that one is i don't think that's gonna happen too often like that one is like a rare like yeah it has to be like a johnny walker video with all the right whiskeys (laughs) 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 she gotta strike lightning in a bottle you know yeah exactly (laughs) like for your 100 hundred dollar whiskey to be like 1700 bucks in value or you know yeah uh, just crazy and you see guys on instagram with like cases and cases of it and they're just waiting you know like they never have to buy whiskey again they just want a nice bottle here's a mccallan edition one and they can do that at like you know 50 times over yeah Ugh, man yeah it hurts. it hurts for sure it does because i could have been one of those guys i could have bought that much at that time i i i bought one and then i got one more later but you know you never know you never know yep you always regret the whiskey you don't buy that's right that's right (laughs) all right well i got one more sample to give away this beautiful george c stag um this is a 2017 bottling this is a weird year because this year they their production went up like crazy amounts i don't know the exact numbers but i think it like more than doubled from the previous year so a lot of people are thinking like, oh, you know, the quality might be down, but I think this is, I've only had three different vintage years of the stag and this is a great, great whiskey. I really like it a lot. Um, it's at the perfect level right now. I've drank it down past the shoulder. It's just opened up just beautifully, really, really nice whiskey. Um, so I'm going to give a little bit of that away. I had another, uh, trivia question and I've kind of forgotten it um rob what do you you got a trivia question you want to throw out there for this one i can give one um is it can it be on my channel or uh yeah you know i think most of these people are uh, subscribed to you so why don't you throw out there something uh <clears throat> something that's specific to you okay so originally i reviewed the uh Dalmore, well not reviewed i opened and like kind of gave a rough estimate of what I would be marking the Dalmore and Lagavulin and Game of Thrones whiskeys. But then I did a complete rundown of the entire list of Game of Thrones whiskeys um, from like all eight of them, basically the single, the single malt, not the uh, Johnny Walker, White Walker. So which of the eight ranked the highest on my list? I think that's a fair question. That's a fair question. I don't. <clears throat> I don't even remember. I think I can guess between one or two. I think. Yeah, I think you're. I mean, it's between one or two. Oh my goodness. Okay, so I got why limit happy hour or happy to one hour or happy to an hour um, has the correct answer on my screen. I don't know who has it. The Lagavulin Nine is the correct answer. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Why limit happy to an hour is the first one of mine as well. So that's that's the winner, right? There. All right. Um, email me at supersocialclub at gmail.com and I will get you a nice uh, one ounce pour of the stag. Congratulations. Wow. Quite a few of these guys follow me. That's pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> of course. I mean, I think we have all the same subscribers, more or less, right? Well, I don't know about that. That Johnny Walker video put you in a different category. I think. <laughs> um, so if you guys haven't, if you guys missed out on these giveaways tonight, um, I still have a giveaway going on my channel right now. It's my um, top five unicorns. All you got to do is be subscribed, leave a comment on that video, and there's a chance to win a Pappy, a sample of a Pappy 20-year-old. That's open until Tuesday, Monday, Monday of uh, next Monday, the 18th. 
that's open until then. So you can leave a comment there, get entered for a chance to win that. After this video is done, um, go in the comments. Just tell me what your favorite Arbeg is. Whatever Arbeg you like the most, leave a comment down below. I'm going to give away a sample of this 1974 Arbeg to all the people who are watching this on um, the second go around through. Includes all you guys. All you got to do is just wait till the video is done, leave a comment. You're interested in this. I'll leave this open until Monday as well. So I'll do the draw for this plus the Pappy on Monday. And give away two samples then. Uh, the email again is uh, sippersocialclub at gmail.com. So email me there. Oh, another super chat. Thank you very much. Um, have a good night. Congrats on 5,000. Yeah, thanks very much, man. Cheers. A little gong for you. The so review. what's crazy about your hitting 5,000 is like you're going to be at 6,000 in two days. You know what I mean? Like it's crazy. Like you're already <laughs> almost at like 5,500. <laughs> well, <laughs> I was doing up like a little like a uh, little promo thumbnail. And it was before I was at 5,000. I was pretty close. I'm like, oh, I'll probably get to 5,000 by the time I air this. And then, yeah, I just went even higher than that. So like, the video is picking back up steam again. So like I said, I'm the one hit wonder of the YouTube reviewers. It's going to, that one song is going to have some lasting, lasting, uh, lasting legend for me. I'll be. It's I'll far be too, it's far too early to like, claim to be a one one hit wonder like <laughs> you had a hit in your first track man like <laughs> I'll, be, I'll be reviewing whiskey uh, when i'm 75 and i'll still be like remember that time i reviewed all those yanni walkers <laughs> <laughs> uh james c another big super chat thank you sir a little gong um yeah absolutely um sharing whiskey is like one of my favorite things i love uh i love sharing with you guys so i'm happy to i'm happy to share That George C. Stag, <clears throat> there's something special about that one. Maybe like so, like Peter White tells me all the time that the the one that I gave to him, the one that I had like maybe a half a bottle left, maybe a little bit less, was the best George C. Stag of all time. It's the 2012. Okay. But that one, they, I that's the one that I tried at my house, right? That you uh, brought to my house. Um, no. That would be this one. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. The one that you have there is the one that I tried at my house. 2017. Yeah. Yeah. So for me, I mean, like I said, it's probably because I just wasn't ready for George C. Stagg back like when I first tried it. But this one was like bonkers, in my opinion. That that one was like I didn't I didn't review the 2017 George C. Stagg, but I feel like it would have got a great mark if I did. Like, I think it would have been up there on my, like, North American top six, that sort of thing. Yeah, this one, um, I'm thinking about, like, what I'm going to score it. <clears throat> and it's kind of like, it's if you're comparing it to, like, all the best bourbons that I've reviewed on my channel, I mean, it's up there. It's going to fit somewhere in between the Pappies for me. Um, I can tell you right now that I it does edge out the 15 Pappy, in my opinion. I do like this bourbon just a little bit more than this one, I think. Um, I'll have to do a little comparison just to be sure about that, but I'm I'm almost positive that I would take this George C. Stag over this 15. Um, but yeah, I just love the George C. Stag. The, the other one I had was a 2010 George C. Stag, which I thought was really, really good. Just, I had it at a bar. Um, if I tried it head to head with this, I don't know, we'll see. I think I would probably pick the, the 2010 one, but Great whiskey. And uh, I think Scotch Test Dummies did, they did this year, right? They did the 2018 Stag, I'm pretty sure. And they, uh, I think they said that they liked the 17 better than the 18. So for me, um, based on what I tried last year and including a little bit of this year, I guess, because I tried, thanks to you, I tried the 23 year, like the Pappy 15, 20, and 23, correct? Or am I wrong about that? We tried the 20 recently, right? Together? Um, no. So the 20 I gave you a sample of. That's right. You, yeah. So I tried that on my own. Yeah. Uh, for me, it, it goes in this order. And I mean, obviously, if I had 
like them all lined up, it could definitely change. So I'm not like sworn in on this and this is officially like my ranking, but it would probably be the William and the Rue Weller 2017, the George C. Stack, the Pappy 20, the Pappy 20, sorry, the Pappy 15, and then the Pappy 23 in that order. So that's for me. I mean, like, obviously, like I said, you've tried more of each. So you have a better idea of like how good each one is, but that would be how I would rank it. Yeah. And I think like it does, the vintage years do definitely play a difference, right? Like, this Pappy 15, you know, it was scored lower on the three Pappies that I've tried. But again, again, maybe a different vintage year could give me different results, right? A little bit different each year. So we'll see. Um, Eric Way's got to go. Thanks for tuning in, man. Appreciate it. Have a good one. And um, Humber, you got to go too. Cheers. Have a good one, guys. Take it easy. Um, that's crazy. What's the best whiskey on your table right now? That's a hard question to answer. I said before, I'd, I'd take the stag over this pappy. This, each time I sip it, I get more and more and more. So I'm going to reserve judgment on this art bag for now. But it's definitely got potential. This whiskey is very, very complex for sure. A lot going doing, on with it. Are you doing like, how, mu how much time do we have? Like, I just want to know. If I should pour another dram or, or what we're doing? Um, I don't know. What are you guys thinking in the chat? We still got 54 watching. I was about ready to wrap it up, but we can do another, like, you know, 10 to 15 minutes or something like that. 10 to 15, that gives me, like, so I definitely shouldn't. I was going to pour um, the grandeur that I have back there, but I guess I can – wait for another live that we do together to do that one I, we've done it together i mean but yeah that's a great that's a great whiskey that one might deserve a little more time yeah um thank you someone was asking what the bottle oh moose was asking what this bottle is this is the um talisker 18. really hard to see the glare sorry talisker 18 for this one that's what we started we started the night with this one i'm gonna go with my cast strength solera cask over here oh the yeah you know what Talk to these guys for a sec. I'm gonna go grab that sample because I have I have that whiskey. Yes, do it. So um, Jeremy actually writes for Toronto Whiskey Society. So if you guys haven't checked out Toronto Whiskey Society, uh, go onto their site. He has some really cool videos. He was doing uh, not videos, sorry, uh, blogs. He was writing for them before he started a channel. Uh, so if you guys haven't checked him out through there. He's got some really cool reviews. I, I'm not sure if he's uh, totally cool with me sharing that information, but he has some great reviews that I actually refer to when I buy some whiskey. So um, he's been doing videos for probably about four or five months now, maybe a little bit longer, but his understanding of whiskey, his experience with whiskey is beyond like – most people's um he talks about like mike and narby and they're awesome they they've they've reviewed some like incredible whiskeys some epic whiskeys they bought some like whiskeys like that i can only dream of uh but jeremy opens like pretty much everything he buys and obviously as you can tell by the table that he has there he has some like insane whiskey so um check check out the other stuff that he's done for sure if you haven't already um, so I can't find the sample. I have probably over a hundred sample jars in my cabinet and it's, like, <laughs> it's gotta be buried somewhere in there. Caitlin is actually taking a look for it. I don't, do you remember what you labeled it? Like Rob's infinity bottle or something? Either. Uh, yeah. Infinity bottle or Solera cask or something like that. Oh, she found it. She found it in one second. <laughs> that, that is um, like the story of my life. <laughs> Babe, where's my pants? I can't buy my pants. How am I supposed to go to work if I can't buy my pants? I know. Like, these our ladies are so much better at finding stuff. I Honestly, if I just ask right away where something is, even if it's right in front of my face. They know every time. Like, they, they have, like, they see things differently than we do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, more clearly for sure. 
Yeah, that's probably what it is. <laughs> They're obviously the more intelligent sex. Yeah, absolutely. Um, <laughs> so here it is. Yeah, whiskey in the six, infinity bottle. So this is all cast strength, yeah? Every single uh, sample or pour in here is cast strength. Some crazy stuff. I'll show it to the camera, but <coughs> can you see that or is it too small? Uh, there we go. Um, yeah, so I can see it. So yeah, Octomore 6-1, Devil's Cast, Glendronic 2002. Oh, that's the 11 year. Deanston 10. Oh, Glengolin uh, Teapot Dram. That's in Dusty uh, Linkwood. 27 year old Linkwood? Where'd you get that from? Uh, Roy. Man, that's a good one. Want that. I just poured like. So basically what I did was like I poured a sample for me and I poured a sample for the gym. Like, I, the way I see this, this is probably like my best, one of my best whiskeys in my entire collection, in my opinion. So <laughs> um, I want to remember all of the cast strength stuff that I've had. <clears throat> so that's basically, I mean, there's much, much, much more here, but I'm going to get a quick drink of water. Yeah, go ahead. This whiskey is great. I mean, the nose on it. It's like you're getting like um, like sherry and peat and a lot of like... There's a lot of like... Um, I don't know about something like youthful vibrancy in it, but it doesn't smell like it's really old. It smells like it's a young sherry peter. So it's a combination of old and young. Um, there's whiskey that's up to 27 years old, but there's also like no, no age statement whiskey in here too, right? So, <clears throat> um, Catherine chimed in the chat. She's asking for the both of us, when we do a review, do we compare to other reviewers and re-collaborate? Re sorry, recalibrate. Um, I try not to do that. I try not to look at anyone else's review um, before I kind of dissect a whiskey and do my notes just because I don't want to be influenced by them. Because a lot of times someone will, you'll be sharing a whiskey and someone will say a tasting note like cranberries and then boom, you'll, you'll taste cranberries or smell cranberries. So yeah. it's very, it's very slippery slope, I think. I think when you're first starting out in whiskey, and I think I'm going to do a video on this of just like how like methods that kind of work for me for like reviewing or like developing your palate a little bit. I think it does help take a look at someone's review and be like, okay, they're getting this, this, and this. Do I pick up this, this, and this from that? Or do I get something else? And then you can kind of like get a calibrate your palate I mean, like, okay, for this whiskey, it's a sherry whiskey, so I'm looking for, you know, dark fruits, cranberries, figs, um, raisins, that kind of thing. So I think when you're first starting out, and it definitely helped me when I was first starting out, um, just writing down notes before I started doing, like, YouTube reviews, I would just look at someone's tasting notes. And even if you look at a bottle that has tasting notes on it as well, and then you can kind of can calibrate your palate to be like, all right, I should look for this and this whiskey and look for this and this whiskey. So yeah, I do think that has some merit for sure. Um, but for my reviews now, I try not to look at anyone else's, not just so I'm not influenced. Um, yeah, I agree 100%. Like it's, <clears throat> I actually try to seek out whiskeys that nobody else has reviewed, to be honest with you, because I don't want to be influenced now. I kind of know what, what to buy based on like what my palate is. And then I just go with like things that I know I'm going to like. And sometimes I'm wrong, but most of the times I'm right. So, yeah, and I think that's the great thing about like finding a reviewer that you share similar a similar palate with or a similar interest in whiskey. You can kind of go to them and be like, "All right, well, this person likes it. They also like all this whiskey that I like as well." And you know, they haven't bashed any whiskey that I personally like, so I kind of trust their opinion and kind of move from from there. You know? Yeah, uh, I mean, you get those comments every once in a while where like. People are like, yeah, I completely agree with everything you say. But then you also get the guys that are like, yeah, like I don't agree with anything you say. So. 
<laughs> yeah, I get a lot of those comments, especially on my Johnny Walker video. <laughs> <laughs> the, new, uh, the new trend, the new trend of comments that are coming through that is uh, how everyone thinks like I'm drunk. You know, <laughs> because, uh, I got seven bottles lined up. I'm immediately intoxicated. I'm like, guys, I'm taking baby sips here. I'm like, what do you, what do you want? Yeah, exactly. I mean, if they can't tell by the video, like all those glasses are pretty much full as you've gone through them, like. Yeah, I mean, like they're all they're all ounce pours or less, and I'm and I'm you know taking one sip and then that's it. So whatever. Yeah. One guy told me to go to bed. He just said go to bed on the comment. <laughs> <laughs> I love like I love putting those comments in my Instagram story. So like yeah, I love it too. I love sharing that stuff. Highlight it and just throw it into my Instagram story. <laughs> like, you get a like huge kick out of it. It's funny. It's really funny. Well, I did that one where like the one guy commented on my video. He said, "Fucking twelve-year-old telling me about whiskey, fuck off," or something like that. So I just photoshopped my twelve-year-old picture of myself reviewing whiskey. I thought it got a couple laughs. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> um, what do you think about this Solera cask? I love it. Or whiskey, in. I love it. I mean, I think if you poured me this and asked me how much this bottle would cost, I would say, you know. 200 to 300 dollars yeah it just smells like a really awesome like rich full smoky sherry whiskey and i'm gonna be honest like this has nothing to do with me like manipulating this to like like an alchemist in a science lab trying to like figure out what the best proportions of what would be that's not what happened here it's me like getting all my cast strength whiskey and pouring at least a, an ounce or a half ounce at least of that whiskey into this bottle. So Roy gave me that two ounce sample. I poured an ounce and a half for me and then a half an ounce of that 27 year old liquid in here. You know what I mean? So it's not everything is an ounce. Some of the, like I actually wrote beside what I put into it, uh, how much I put into it as well. So, yeah, I mean, like, I guess if you just pour a bunch of awesome whiskey all together, I mean, it's not going to make it worse, you know? Mm. I mean, every single malt, unless it's a single cask, is a blend of different whiskeys, right? So, Yeah, absolutely. Um, it's a blend of, like, various whiskeys from that distillery from that particular distillery right so like um, sorry just to, should we talk about our um little blending challenge we got going on here absolutely yeah Go all for right it. so i kind of came up with this idea that a bunch of youtubers that review whiskey here in canada myself whiskey in the six swami from under montreal uh, Vito from Cast Strength, Mark from Whiskey Whistle, and Trenny and C from Trenny and C. I kind of just threw up this challenge that to take from your bar between three to ten whiskeys, you can choose anything you want, blend them together, bottle it, we'll ship it all to each other, we'll each do it, we'll ship it all to each other so everyone gets a sample of everyone else's whiskey, we'll try them all completely blind, We'll rank which ones we prefer from top to bottom. And then we'll like kind of collaborate all the results and then like crown a winner and see whose whiskey uh, we prefer the best. So we're in the process of doing that right now. Um, I think we've all blended our whiskeys. I've put all mine into samples. They're ready to be shipped out. I think, Rob, you've done the same. Yours are ready to go. Yep. So look for those videos in the next uh, couple of weeks. So we're going to ship them all to each other. We're just gonna film each other. Um, we're just gonna film our own blind review, and then we'll re re release them kind of periodically throughout a week or a two week process or something like that. So, and uh, we'll see. We'll see who's uh, got the best blending skills. Well, you know what I think we should make sure we do is like get our girlfriend or our wife or whoever, our boyfriend, whatever, whatever <laughs> situation you're in, um, get them to pour your glass. You know what I mean? Like your samples. Um, this way you don't know who created what. 
So that's not going to like influence your decision. Yeah, right? absolutely. Yeah. It's got to be done in a way where like, we don't know whose whiskey we're, we're drinking. We just rank them first to last and then reveal who's is who's at the end. Yeah. I think that would be best. Um, just because, I mean, if I end up picking yours, I'm going to be like, oh yeah, you're, you're good buds with, with Jeremy. So obviously you're going to pick his whiskey or whatever. You know what I mean? So, <laughs> well, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. It's gotta be done blind. It has to be done blind. Of course you're going to have a bias, you right? Like yeah. for sure. Or at uh, least people are going to claim that you're biased. Sure. Yeah, of course. So it, it needs to be done completely blind. hundred percent. Um, Jay fretless commented, I would imagine in, as a reviewer, you would have to review bottles. People can get, uh, you couldn't survive doing exclusive bottlings and store fix. Yeah, I totally agree with that. I think, I think for me, like I want to see a review of a bottle that I know I could go out and potentially buy. Yeah. Um, a lot of people review store picks and stuff. And obviously me in Ontario, Canada, I'm not going to be able to get like a U.S. bourbon store pick unless I find them in the secondary market or wherever. Um, but I think you can throw those kind of in there to kind of change it up. But yeah, I think for the most part, people want to see reviews where they can be like, okay, that bottle, I can go out and get it on his recommendation or not, or get past it and vice versa. So I think for my channel, what I like to do is I like to give reviews of everything. I like to give like the popular bottles, like the whole Johnny Walker range. And then I like to do stuff like, um, you know, like these kind of bottles, right? Like stuff that you might not ever see, but you still be like an interesting kind of like take on something like this. Yeah. Um, I mean, so yeah. Kind of like a, kind of like a mix of both, I think for sure. Right. It gives people an idea of what to go out and look for too, right? Like it's, it's, <clears throat> it's a double edged sword. Cause if you don't do any of those, then you're not, you're not necessarily building your experience with whiskey. You know what I mean? Like, um, like you said, a bunch of guys are doing like store picks or whatever, but I think those are very important because people go crazy about the, like the Pappy Van Winkles, the George C. Staggs, the, like the, the Buffalo Trace Antique collection, but there's store picks out there that are just as good, if not better than all of those whiskeys. You know what I mean? So yeah, it's not fair to use that as an example, but what, like, I think the idea is, is that, you don't have to spend a thousand dollars on a whiskey for it to be like one of the best whiskeys you've ever tried. You know what I mean? So absolutely. Yeah. And a lot of times the prices of expensive whiskey, you're not getting, you know, two times, three times, four times the enjoyment factor of something that costs way less. So no, you're not, it's just different, right? Like whiskey. I mean, we've tried some nice old stuff. We've been fortunate not to try some really nice bottles and is it get like super, super better? I don't know. It, it gets different. It gets completely different, right? You're trying a profile that you haven't tried before. It's not necessarily like better, but it's just, it's something that you haven't had yet. And it's kind of, that's kind of the appeal, I guess, to it. Right. Absolutely. Like the other, uh, you were there, we went to the Caledonian and we tried a bunch of whiskeys that night. Uh, it was the whiskey whiskey in the six, like anniversary, like, small get together we didn't like i i did the rob thing and like totally didn't like plan it out just kind of like <laughs> winged it um jeremy's very like meticulous and like obviously this is a very organized beautifully planned out live whereas if you guys are subscribed to my channel you know that it's never really planned out it's kind of like on a cusp like <laughs> winging it whatever um anyway the event was very similar to that. And I tried a bunch of different whiskey. And I tried some like really cool whiskeys. And then I tried this Kalila. I think it was a 2004, or 2005 Gordon McPhail cast strength, uh, like what, like nine years old or eight years old, something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Gordon yeah. McPhail cast strength series. Yeah. And it blew me away. Like it blew me away. And I mean, if you don't try a bunch of different things, you'll never know. Like you, you, you will not. Like you'll be stuck in your realm, and you'll never actually like know. So, going back to what we were saying about like the the barrel picks for stores and all that different type of stuff, like those serve a purpose because 
it tells people, you know what, you got to get outside of your box and go explore like all these different kinds of things. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Without a doubt, for sure. All right. We are at the two hour mark. Um, I think we should call it. I'm going to give away one more sample. Um, and it's going to be the winner's choice. You can choose between the art bag, the pappy, or the stag, whatever one you want. Uh, one more sample. The question is, what was my very first video ever released on my channel? What was it called? Someone asked me what I would uh, score this whiskey. I would score it. It would be, I guess, probably it'd be right around that 90 mark, I think, for me. Right around that 90 mark. Come on, guys. Very first, very first video I ever produced. You can just go check it out right now. I think someone has it. I be wrong. I might be wrong. Well, now I'm not. Now I'm. Now I'm, I'm confused. <laughs> what was my very first video I ever let, released? Caitlin, can you check that out and see? <laughs> uh, okay, so the very first video that I released was called Drink My Bar, right? That's it, Drink My Bar. Yeah, uh, Louis, I think Louis was the first guy that had that. All right, Louis, congratulations. Yeah, I thought it was, uh, I thought it was the top five scotches for beginners, but I guess I released. Yeah, I released that one first, drink my bar first, and then that one second. So yeah. So uh, we'll we'll uh, split the shipping because I owe Louis a sample as well. <laughs> <Do you>? <laughs> <laughs> All right, Louis, congratulations! You are the winner. Uh, let me know which one you want to choose. Um, email me. Well, Rob probably has your information, but email me anyway at um, Sipper Social Club at Gmail dot com. Um, I love this Louis. Like, I gotta meet this Louis guy because he's on top of the ball. Like, he knows your stuff. He knows my <laughs> stuff. He knows, he knows what's going on, man. Well, I'm glad. I'm glad he's uh, well deserving of the of the sample for sure. Absolutely. So, Louis, uh, you want to let us know what one you choose? I'm interested to hear like what what would you be what you'd be interested in here. Stephen Connor says he was first. I got Louis first, but I could be wrong. Yeah, I got Louis by one, two, three, three comments. All that matters is what you got. Our samples. Yeah, that was a close one, Habs. <laughs> Never sell your channel short. You do a fantastic job and uh, you're very knowledgeable. Thank you, buddy. I appreciate it. I don't know about that though. Oh, he's talking to me. He's talking to me. Well, he actually uh, <laughs> tagged, he actually tagged me in that comment. But, <laughs> <laughs> but you, to you totally are very knowledgeable, so. Um, all right, well, Louis, just uh, just let me know what you choose, and I'll pour it for you, right? But um, he oh, he chose Arping. All right, cool. Yeah, awesome choice. Uh, I think you'll like this one a lot. Really, really good whiskey, and um, this keeps evolving in the glass. I'm gonna go back to it. I get a little bit more. I need All to right. get. Like, I need to get my wife to do like the Caitlin duties because, like, <laughs> she's like she's. I'm realizing how much she's dropped the ball based on like what players <laughs> <working out. laughs> Or I just need to hire Caitlin for what like... <laughs> Hey, Caitlin is all mine. You want to rent her out, we'll talk numbers. <laughs> hey, okay, so like <laughs> when you come over for a live, like if people are just like accepting a ton of free whiskey, then bring her too and then she can hook it up. <laughs> um that's true you have hooked her up actually you gave her that art that uh lefroy glory which she absolutely loves she loves that stuff good um that's crazy asking you can choose his sample crazy remind me what what one did you win did you win the stag or i can't remember 
Yeah, if you want to, if you want to choose, uh, <laughs> if you want to pick a different, a different whiskey, absolutely. Let me know what you want. I'm happy to pour any one of the three for you. Uh, we know. Moose seventy six is saying I'm going to be sleeping on the couch tonight. So. Yeah, you are. <laughs> <laughs> my the good thing is, is my wife actually doesn't watch any of my stuff. So That's okay, I'm just gonna clip that like ten second spot and then and get email it to her. <laughs> <laughs> You're supposed to be on my side, man. <laughs> uh that's crazy once the airbag for sure man you got it you got the airbag absolutely nice all right well i think it's a great live man i think for the first for first time um i think it went pretty smooth for the most part and uh i don't know i mean when you uh when you advertise you're giving away uh unicorns so people come running you know <laughs> all i can do is every single episode is i've set the bar now too high or i have to give away uh a sample of some good stuff every time but you i think see, uh we've been giving away samples of awesome stuff like on your channel all prior so you've been giving away samples of epic stuff on my channel on your channel like pretty much as soon as you hit the air like you've been giving away epic stuff so <laughs> well i feel fortunate right because like i won these bottles on you know um raffles and stuff so i didn't pay you know full secondary for them i got them at a good deal so i'm happy to happy to share them at that at that you know yeah like the first thing the first question people ask me when i won that william Lou weller is like obviously you're gonna pop it up on like lottery or you're gonna sell it i'm like i don't know like i really want i like i love william Lou weller i don't i don't want to get rid of it so we'll see um one back saying do i want a sample of green island? oh yeah i'd take a grandpa sample of green island for sure that was one of the whiskeys on uh, my Johnny Walker, a lot of people said that they liked a lot was the Green Island one. A little more peat, perhaps, in that. So, yeah, definitely. If you want to send me a sample, email me, Super Social Club at Gmail. I'll send you my address and we can, uh, I'll send you something back for sure. Is it not aged in rum casks, that one? <clears throat> I don't know. I don't know. I don't or think so. Or finished? Could be right. Uh, they got, Johnny Walker's got a couple of crazy ones. Um, they got one that's finished in like a rye cask and yeah that's up to the lcbo right now actually yeah um so yeah that's crazy if you want one of the bourbons sorry yeah you won the arbe you want a bourbon yeah just let me know um email me and i'll send you whatever one uh, whatever one you want but uh thanks so much for uh for coming out everyone really appreciate it uh rob let them know where they can find you what you're coming up on your channel that kind of thing so um whiskey in the six you guys can check me out on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook. Um, Jeremy, thank you for having me, man. I appreciate it. Oh, well, absolutely. Thanks for coming on. And uh, sorry, the weather, we couldn't like hang out together tonight, but I'm sure we got lots of these in the future. So definitely some time to do that. Um, thanks again. Check me out. Uh, what I got put up the channel, I'm going to do a review of, I got a couple samples. Um, lots of people are sending me whiskey now, which is great. Um, overflowing with samples. So I got some stuff to, uh, to sample, to try out. And I'm going to do those Brook Lotties, the, uh, the MC01, the MCR01. Those two new Brook Lotties that come out, they're really awesome stuff. So I'm going to get that review up while those whiskeys are still on the shelf. And maybe you can still uh, pick one up if, uh, if you like them. So again, cheers, everyone. Thanks a lot. Really, really appreciate it. Have a good one. See ya.